Hey everyone, Paul here. Now, how amazing was that level, the left and right detector? That was such a cool mechanic I've never seen before. And we got to chat to Nabuzz about it. So I said, thank you for taking the time to chat like this. I've really enjoyed getting to chat to the creators and get a feel for the design process. One of my previous videos was based on your jump detector level and I feel that this left and right level has come from that. Now if you don't remember, previously I've played a jump detector level and when you jump the blocks turn on and off and that was amazing. Go back to a previous video to go and see that. So they replied, actually I've had the left and right detector built back in November while well, the jump detector only came after the 3.0 update in March. But I made both of these because I like designing contraptions in Mario Maker and seeing if I can make my crazy ideas work somehow. <laughs> so I replied then, did you have the mechanic developed before thinking about level designs? Yeah, the level designs came after developing the mechanism. Since it's not possible to create actual instant left and right detection, and he said that there's a 12 frame delay in the detection. 12 frames, that's not a lot. I had to design around the specific quirks of the actual mechanism. So basically, he has designed a level around the left and right mechanism. And he's designed it around the 12 frame delay as well. Now, I don't think 12 frames is very much, but you speedrunners out there may think that that is quite a long time. So I replied then, could you run through with me how the detector worked? I would love to include that at the end of the video. So basically, if you stay tuned right until the end of the video, we've got a tutorial on how it is made. So they have replied, yeah, definitely. The most important aspect of it is the boo in the clown car, which is hidden from the player. Okay, so that's how it works. Boos are the most straightforward way to detect player dete uh, direction. But as standard boos don't have collision, I figured clown cars would be an easy way to get around this. Now, if you remember guys, in Mario Maker 1, people put a boo with a muncher stacked on top of it, and then they put a P-switch underneath the boo, and when you turned away from the boo, the boo would come towards you, the muncher would drop off and hit the P-switch. So that was how people used to do uh, direction detection on Mario Maker 1. You can see that things have improved so much in Mario Maker 2. So they carried on and said, above the screen there are big boos in clown cars at either side of the screen, shoved in a small space against a gentle slope. Now that must change the hitbox so that they're really squashed in there. This particular room configuration at a specific Y position, Y equals 16, because for some reason it only works in one specific space, which is weird. Has the specific behavior of the clown car continuously hitting the note block underneath it when you look away and not hitting the note block when you look at it. This allows for the detection to be as consistent as possible. Below the clown cars, a note block pushes a sideways spring below, clipping it to a P-switch just enough to hit the shell into the on and off switch. This is a crazy contraption. The shell then moves slightly upward over the top of the on and off block, causing it to get hit and stop spinning, which prevents an unnecessary noise from the shell bouncing around. The on and off conveyors below it make it so that only one side is active at a time by moving the shell on the other side out of reach of the sideways spring. By mirroring this setup on both sides of the room, you get a complete left and right detector. However, again, because Nintendo can't program, this setup only works before X equals 128 for no apparent reason. Weird. By swapping out the clown car boo piece of the setup with this alternate version, you can create the detector throughout the entire level. And he's going to give us screenshots for both. Um, so we'll run through that at the end of the video. So then I replied, I liked every section with one screen, the ice coins and the ice blocks marking your progress. Do you plan on uploading any more levels with this mechanic? I feel that you could make a full level for each of the sections shown. And again, Nabuzz has replied, fun fact, 
Each room was only one screen because that's the largest area the mechanism will actually work. At this point I'm still working on improving and perfecting it, but I also enjoy making single screen rooms in general. And it's funny that you mention ice coins as well, because the rooms need to have thick walls to prevent the player from going out of range of the clown car. Okay. So I filled that space with progress indicators which players typically appreciate. And yes, I have several more ideas for levels with this mechanic. I'm working on a Link dungeon level with it right now and plan to make a Kaizo level and a more simple slash accessible level with this tech as well. I really feel that a Link dungeon would work with that. It'd, you'd, you'd have some puzzles with the bombs and throwing a bomb and you've got to look left and right and maybe with the bow and arrow and it's it's going to be great. I really trust Nabuzz to come up with some decent things. The way that they came up with a jump detector level was brilliant and this level again was brilliant as well. Then I replied, if there was one more thing that the on and off block could control, what would you like to see? He's replied, I've always thought on-off semi-solids or one-way gates would be extremely useful for me as a contraption builder, but I'll have to wait for Mario Maker 3 to see what uh, happens. So then my next question to them was, how do you find working with the whole four-year Mario Maker team? And again they've replied, I really enjoyed working with the four, Mar four year Mario Maker team. I was never active in the Mario Maker community before this project and was lucky to find a comment on a level I had made asking me to join the project. I've been watching videos of the project since two year Mario Maker and always wanted to be a part of it. So getting to join the project and meeting so many people who are just as passionate about the game as me was a real treat. Yeah, that, that again I can identify with that the Mario Maker community is brilliant they're really kind they're really everyone's got this passion that they share and it is brilliant to be a part of how long did it take you to make the level and they again they've replied I've been working on this level on and off since November <laughs> no pun intended most of the time was dedicated to revising and optimizing the mechanism but in total I probably spent close to 80 hours on this level alone and they've, they've put in brackets, don't worry, I have other hobbies as well. 80 hours, wow, that is a lot. Did you go through many revisions during testing and de-cheesing? The final version of my level was the 8th revision, and the level changed quite a bit over that time. The mechanism that made it into the level was the 4th version, wow, okay. The 3rd version was actually faster as a detector but about five times as loud and gave the testers headaches. Oh, wow, okay. But I guarantee this loud version will make an appearance in future levels, so they've got an even quicker detector. It's just that it's a bit loud. All right, okay. I would love to see a whole level series based on the left-right mechanic. I feel you would really expand this for puzzles, Kaizo, tra 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 uh, traditional troll levels. And they replied, thanks, I'm planning on making more levels with this for sure, but I feel there are so many more ideas that could be made with this than I can think of. Which is why I showed a mechanism to the player so anyone can expand on my design and take it to its trolley potential. We don't want troll levels, we don't want any trolley levels whatsoever, although I feel like they're going to be made. So I replied to that, where do you go from here? Have you got any more levels planned? I want to see some more one screen puzzles from you. I played several from Mario Maker 1 and actually started the YouTube channel to solve one screen puzzles. That's a bit of a uh, history lesson there for the Paul Lloyd channel. If you go back right to the start, we were playing one screen puzzles and solving them. So they've said, I actually have a super world in the works but we'll see if I have the motivation to actually finish it. I can imagine after 80 hours, you just want a bit of a break from Mario Maker right now. And one screen puzzles are actually some of my favorite levels to build. I definitely will be making more of those at some point. Oh, that's exciting. And who knows, maybe I'll have an idea for a new contraption at some point to rival my four year Mario Maker level. Oh, well, if we get to five year Mario Maker and they get in, it's gonna be 
awesome to see what new mechanics they've got. And then I've replied with a little, um, a poking a bit with the question here. I've said, also, I've read in the description of the level on the Warp World website that it says levels. They're updating, they're uploading levels. Will we be seeing more from you in the four year Mario Maker series? Or is that like the Mario Maker other themes section? Just put there to tease us. So in Mario Maker, you've got your four main themes and then you've got other themes and you've got the Cat Mario one. And it's a real disappointment. It just, it's themes with an S and there's only one. And they've replied, guess you'll have to wait and see. Wink, and then they put a winky face and they've said, just kidding. I have one more level in store for four year Mario Maker. But I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a secret or not. Oh, so we've got some uh, breaking news, some exclusive news there from the buzz. And I've replied, sounds interesting. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat. So thank you, the buzz. Now we're going to get straight on to the tutorial. Hope you're going to be building this. If you do build it, please share the level code with me down in the comments section. Let's go. <laughs> Alright, so now we've probably reached the part of the video where you're most excited for. This is going to be the tutorial section. So you can see along the top of the screen now, we've got everything that we need to make this contraption. So pause the video now, get everything pinned exactly like I've got. No plot, buzzy beetle, on off switch, tracks, P, spring, semi solid, one way gate, gentle slope clown cart, boo, and the ground pieces. All right, so now that we've done that, you want to set up an area like this, where the screen doesn't scroll one bit. And to do that, what you need to do is if you come here, and I just delete some sections, you can see, basically this outside line doesn't really matter, but you want to put the ground pieces on the inside of this thick black line and then on the other side same again on the inside of the thick black line let's undo that and undo that okay so once you've got that set up the screen scroll will not allow the screen to move and then we've basically got the contraption working in this area. And you can make a lot of things in a one screen area. So here's the weird part about the contraption. If you're on X equals less than 128, you've got to make the contraption one way. And if you're on X equals more than 128, you've got to make it a different way. So basically it's, more or less, if we if we go, help, how do we get back? If, if we go back now, if we go along here, this line here is a dividing line. So this side is less than 128 and that is more than 128. So if the contraption doesn't work and you're building, then just count the tiles out and you might be on the right hand side of this you might be more than x equals 128 now also the y coordinate is very very important you've got to build it in a specific place you've got to build this note block in a specific place which is just below this black line here so what you're going to want to do is if you get rid of these blocks for now just while we're building What you want to do is get the note block and place down the note block right there. Then we get sideways spring, put the spring down, hold on to it sideways and put that underneath the note block. And now we get the piece, uh, yeah, now we get the piece switch and we put that underneath. Now again, we get the conveyor we put that three blocks long underneath the P switch there hold on to it make it red now what you want to do is have it facing to the right the arrow there needs to be pointing to the right 
Now we're going to get the Buzzy Beetle. We'll place the Buzzy Beetle down there. Hold on to it and make it into a shell. Now we go back along to the top. We get the on-off block and we put that there. Okay. Once we've done that, we put a note block above that. That ensures that the on-off switch is only hit once. It's a weird mechanic, I know. Now, again, across the top, we get the one-way gate. And the one-way gate is a little bit obscure. You might miss it if you if you can't see it there. But it's underneath the um, note block and the spring. Once we've done that, we can start putting some ground pieces in. So we want a ground piece there, there, there. And then we can... Uh-oh. <laughs> and we can just surround. It's a bit awkward making this when you're not in handheld mode. And you can also put your blocks back there and there. Okay. Now that we've got that done, we can go across to the top and we can get our clown car. And we put the clown car here on that block. And then we go across again. We get the boo. Put the boo. Hold on to the boo. And we make him big. Hold on to him again. And we give him wings then place them in the clown car. Okay, now that we've done that, you want to get the gentle slope, and this can be a little bit tricky to line up. So you place the gentle slope, drag it down so it's sloping that way, and what we're gonna do is just place it up there, out the way for a minute, get our ground piece, you come out by one, you go up two, and then this section of the um, gentle slope is gonna be here. So you drag from the middle of the gentle slope and place it down like that. And you come across and you join it there. And you join it there. And now that guy is trapped in there. Another thing, really important this, you don't want to forget this. If you get the uh, semi-solid, put a semi-solid down. I'm just going to change the colour to yellow just so it's a bit more easier to see. And you place it so that this top right-hand corner, this piece here is underneath the p-switch so you should if you've got a three by three semi-solid you should see one piece here now you can make it a bit more aesthetically pleasing by hiding that or or changing the, uh, the the decorations of the level but that's basically the left hand detector so we're going to go into a bit of a time lapse we're going to build the right hand detector now All right, so now that we've built that, it's easier to build it right next to it where you can see. We've got everything identical there. We've dragged the whole lot, and you want to just move that over to this side of the screen. Like that, there we go. Now, just fill in these pieces once you, basically once you've made a uh, semi-solid copy like that, that'll delete those ground pieces. So I'm just gonna delete these so that you can see identical on both sides now what we want to do just for testing purposes if we go all the way along on our wheels there we get some dotted line blocks we put some red ones down there hold on to them and change them to the blue ones okay now when we start the level we go in through the door you can see when you're facing the right, you've got the red ones. You face left, you've got this. <laughs> you can make some really unique levels with this. 
Now, I'll just run through quick the X, uh, when X is above 128, just so that you can see the changes. So if we go all the way along here, now I've already built this one and basically the contraption on the bottom is identical. Everything is exactly the same. I've missed a, a ground piece there when I've dragged it across. Everything there is identical. Just on this top section, what you want to do is on the original, I'll just make the original, the slope, gentle slope was there. So you need to move that down one and the clown car you need just a small boo with no mushroom no wings nothing like that you just need a small boo in a clown car and this one-way gate needs to be there pointing towards the clown car on the right hand side it's exactly the same you've got small boo you've got clown car and you've got a one-way gate there and you've got the gentle slope that's moved down by one now if we just press play on there you can see it works exactly the same now you will notice that it is quite noisy on this game style on super mario world if you change it to super mario bros 3 the note block sound when hit is a little bit quieter as you can hear. So if you're going to make this, I'd recommend making it in Super Mario Bros. 3 just because you don't want the note block sound to be heard all the time. And you can make some really good levels. Let me know down in the comments section if you use this mechanic and you upload a level. I'd love to see it and I'm sure Nabuzz would as well. Hope you've enjoyed it. Just remember to put the this note block it, it, this contraption will not work at any other height so make sure that you build it on this thick black line don't let the screen scroll and keep this note block underneath this thick black line and build it hope you've enjoyed it if you have leave a comment down below let me know if you want any more questions asked to the creators of the levels. Let me know as well if you've enjoyed the tutorial. If you have, we may be doing some more tutorials in the future. This has been Noteblock, a Mario Maker podcast. Take care.